Hi there, welcome to the um, first review of organic chemistry. So the hydrocarbons are two categories, saturated and unsaturated. Saturated ones are there are open chain hydrocarbons and cycloalkanes, but the alkanes are saturated. And then unsaturated ones are there are alkenes, alkynes, and aromatics. Now that's the uh, the fundamental difference: saturated versus unsaturated. Now we're also going to look at a bit more details about each. So alkanes are CnH2n plus two, alkenes are CnH2n, and alkynes are CnH2n minus two. Aromatics don't bother about giving a generic formula. So this generic formula applies to alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes, right? Now, alkanes have all single bonds, all sigma bonds, and they are 109 bond angle, tetrahedral, and sp3 hybridization. That's kind of the best thing to memorize. The rest has a little bit of a variation. So alkenes have one pi bond, alkynes have two pi bonds, so one triple bond at least. Now, um, alkenes are 120 degrees trigonal planar sp2, right? And alkynes are two pi bonds or one triple bond and sp 180 degrees linear. Aromatics, just make sure there is a benzene ring somewhere, right? There are only few without the benzene ring actually visible, so you should be safe on that. Now, also, remember um, index of hydrogen deficiency. If you need it, we will do a problem at the end of this lesson. So just to show that how to calculate that one, IHD, right? Okay. Now also remember uh, another question about the homologous series. The homologous series is also important. Okay. So we'll do a question on that. Now, um, naming the number of carbons 1 to 10 basically right and then the root names i call the root names it's easier and that's meth eth prop but pent hex hept oct and also we perhaps we need uh, non and dec let's put it up there so it's not very common 9 is non in and 10 is docane dec decane right okay now um, when this is on the main chain and the root name, but if it is a substituent, you're just going to add a yield, methyl, ethyl, propyl, butyl, and so on. So you write it like methyl dash, ethyl dash, propyl dash, and so on, butyl dash, you can go on. But just remember, it's an alkyl. That's an R group. It can call R1, R2, R prime. It's all alkyl groups. That's what the big R you're going to see pretty much everywhere in the organic uh, chemistry series. Okay? So it's an alkyl undefined, ethyl, methyl, propyl, butyl, and so on. Okay. Now, so we can get an example. So we had few examples. We'll take this one. So C6H14, so CNH2N plus 2. So just give it a try. And then you draw a bunch of carbon, six carbons, and fill the hydrogens. We know each carbon needs four sig single bonds, four sigma bonds. That's what it is. So that's a that's a typical Lewis structure type details, right? And also you need to know this um, the the simpler version of line diagram, and then also you need to know the line diagram conversion into the condensed or back vice versa. Each corner is a CH3, middle ones are CH2, four of them. Then you can also write CH2 four times each each side is CH3, CH3. That's a good way too, right? You might see all, all, all three and also the, uh, um, the space filling model, ball and stick model, condensed formula, everything, right? The, okay, yes. The other question about the isomers, one good example is this one. Take hexane. Cut the tail, stick it on the front. Cut the tail again, stick it in the front. So that way you can actually make the same molecular formula. You can get the different structures. So structural isomers, basically, right? Okay. Now, if you remove a hydrogen from anywhere and substitute that with the fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, that's a 
halo alkane you can replace with nh2 you can replace with oh you can replace with the carboxylic acid so that's where you're thinking about the functional group or functionality so below we will discuss the functional groups that you will need to know and um, also just remember the hydrocarbons normally they show only combustion and substitution with in the presence of uv light uh, halogenation those are the two things you need to know right and uh, let's look at the functional groups we usually call this thing a monofunctional because normally we have only one functional group in a in a question in a problem in a molecule that's why and uh, we go for we go for the monofunctionals right now alcohol the most common one and uh, it's not in the priority order i'm just giving um, easier ones first so alcohol roh it's uh, ending it all and um, one example ch3oh and methanol that's the name right let's take amine so there's rnh2 and then it's amine ending up with and ethyl amine it's ethanamine right and then let's take another one we have uh, halo alkanes and r you should call ri rx something whatever we'll take ri that's halo that means iodo in this case so um this is iodopropane because there's the alkyl group is pr that's why iodopropane right let's take another one amido amido you should have uh, amide or peptide rco and h2 and uh, this one should be having the name amido actually amide -A -A amide and amide here and then one example is ch3 c double bond o and h2 let's say so two carbons so that would be ethanamide ethanamide or ethanamide right okay so it's not amido it's amide a m i d e right the next one is keto r c double bond o r it's uh, it's not one it is own ketone right okay so ch3 c double bond o ch3 that's actually two propanone because keto group on the second carbon the next one is aldehyde functionality r c double bond o h and that's ending up with an L. One example is CH3, C double bond OH. That's two carbon ethan L, ethan L. Now the last one, carboxylic acid, R, C double bond O, OH. It ends up with oic, CH3, cool, the most popular one. Ethanoic acid, acetic acid, vinegar. So it's better to know that one, right? Now the priority order actually one, two, and so on, but at least you have to know uh the top of the food chain is carboxylic acid that's the number one priority then the aldehyde and then so on, right now just know in case if you have a second group it's a substituent that would be a different name so alcohol it would be hydroxy amine it would be amino uh, halo would be always halo iodo bromo chloro fluoro right and the other ones just um, yeah ketones could be oxo but the other ones do have names but don't bother now at this point right okay now uh, we can move on to the functional groups are good yeah that's good enough oh yes this one the primary secondary tertiary and quaternary that's also coming quite uh, often i write one primary one dot and and so on but primary secondary tertiary quaternary right one two one node two node three node four node kind of alcohols so when the alcohol group is attached to a carbon with one r group attached the other two are hydrogens it's primary two r groups secondary three r groups tertiary and there's no quaternary alcohols got it amine Amine, when you have one R group and attached, it's primary. Two R groups attached, secondary. Three R groups attached, tertiary. There's no hydrogen on the tertiary. There's cocoa quaternary. That's a salt because R groups, four R groups attached to a nitrogen positive. That's a salt, actually, right? Let's fix this one. R3N, there's no hydrogen. This is good example. Trimethylamine. There's three methyls. All hydrogens are gone of the amine and three r groups it's also called nnn trimethylamine 
don't bother about the names on this one, type two, right? Okay, now we're gonna jump to the next. Yes, next one is actually just a just simple numbering question that we had. So how to number this one, right? So look for the longest chain and the earliest branching or the least number for the branching that should be right to the left so one two three four five six i'm going up four five six because if i go all the way left that's not good right you want to get the longest chain six carbons hexane now you have two methyl you have three methyl and anything else four methyl so two three four trimethyl right so that goes in front two three four dash trimethyl hexane that's it so that's how we kind of choose which way to start numbering right oh the functional group uh, uh, looking for the functional group uh, look at the vitamin c so this is the structure of vitamin c it's coming from six carbon d glucose actually so let's say this is the oh there should be another oh in the fifth carbon here yeah okay so let's say yes um like i said this is simply i put it there but if i want to make um r uh, 5oh so what you so yeah fifth oh is r so it's also it's coming from d glucose we know that but if i want to specifically draw this is what i do i get the oh1 pri priority then the second carbon second priority and then third priority take the rotation looks clockwise then what do you do you draw the hydrogen in the back the dash the dash is the hydrogen. Now you have actually clockwise, which is R. Okay. Now the functional groups here, hydroxyl groups, right? And there's another one called the lactone. Again, this one is just cyclic ester. Think that way. It's a lactone actually, right? So we found out hydroxyl groups in the vitamin C and it's coming from D glucose. It's something good to know because um, vitamin c is really cheaper it's coming from sugars right okay i um yeah ibuprofen so this is the ibuprofen molecule and then let's look at the functional groups there's a carboxylic okay there's a chiral center just try to identify the chiral center and try to find out whether it's r and s right so there's a carboxylic group there's aromatic ring the benzene ring right now let's look at the aspirin aspirin you have carboxylic group, uh, an aromatic ring, aryl, right? And then what's the other group? It's not a carboxylic, it looks like carboxylic, but it's an ester. Okay, so what's the next thing we have? Uh, yeah, penicillin, let's, uh, let's make the penicillin and see. So we have a benzene ring and then the amide, and then we have this uh, beta-lactam uh, functionality. So let's put together sulfur, dimethyl, and the carboxylics, right? So, okay, let's identify. Yes, this is C double bond O NH, that's an amide, and then this is a carboxylic. So that's the most obvious one, right? Other ones, uh, there's beta lactam, don't worry about that. Aromatic, you need to identify. And um, sulfur, you need to identify, right? This is not a sulfur hydrile though, right? Um, Okay, so the penicillin functional groups, that's good enough. We look at another molecule. Mm. Yes, we have, uh, what do we have here? Uh, yeah, so that's the cinnamaldehyde. Yeah, your cinnamon bun. So this is what the smell and the taste gives you. Cinnamaldehyde. So there's uh, functional groups. Aldehyde, number one carbon. Okay. And then also you have their alkene functionality in cinnamaldehyde. And uh, the other one, mm, yes, vanilla. So, mocha, coffee, vanilla, right? So vanilla is here. So what's this one? We do have in vanilla, the functional groups are, should be actually carboxylic and, am I right here? Yes. You have uh, aldehyde group, we have um, ether group, we have phenol group, 
right? So it's not a base. It's not because base is only when you have metal lines, right? So let's uh, let's mark again. So I think yeah, we didn't circle this one here. Ether group, ester group, and the carboxylic group, and carboxylic group here, and the aromatic ring, right? And the alkyl.